那么第三部分呢，我将结合托福口语的 TPO 的第一套题，来为大家讲解一下这每一个题啊都有什么样的特点。我们在拿到这不同题的时候，他们的重点在哪里？我们应该如何抓关键词，并且如何组织我们的答案，来让我们的答案变得更加流畅，符合逻辑顺序，并且通过一些什么样的方法，来让答案变得更加完整，也让考官更加印象深刻一些。所以，我们先来看一下 TPO 这一些题的特点，然后结合一些比较好的答案，我们一起来学习一下。来，先看一下 TPO 第一套题的第一题。Talk about a book you have read that was important to you for some reasons. Explain why the book was important to you. Give specific details and examples to explain your answer. 我们拿到这个题的时候，首先来看一下。它的重点在哪里？它的重点词首先第一个 ，a book， 我们要谈论的是一本书。其次呢 ，important， 为什么这本书对我们来说格外的重要？这一刻我们就要想了，重要意味着什么？重要意味着首先我们可以想到，它可能对我们的影响特别大。那么影响特别大是因为具体的哪些事情？这样我们是不是都要把这一套的思路在答案中？都要体现出来呢，或者是第二个，这个书啊，有可能跟我们产生很大的共鸣。那么产生很大的共鸣，它里面有什么样的内容？我们又有什么样的一个经历，让我们的经历跟这个书产生了共鸣？所以这个书变得 important 呢？所以大家看到我刚才这整个的引导顺序，其实是在不停的问自己：为什么？为什么这本书会很重要？那么，为什么这本书会给我们的生活有这么密切的关系，让我们产生共鸣？并且，这个题除了要说 “What is a book”， 还要说 “Why”。为什么这本书对我们来说特别重要？所以，这两方面我们都要涵盖到，并且一定要注意举一些 specific details。考官注意的其实是我们对这个题在作答的时候的发挥能力，我们能否结合自己的真实经验和体会。来进行更具体的作答。那么，我们先来看一下第一个答案。第一个答案呢，其实我认为是咱们很多同学的基本能力都能达到的，而且这个答案也是比较好能做出的。我们来看一下这个答案，并且学习一下它有哪些地方值得我们来一块学习。那么 ，The book that was important to me was an introduction manual. On how to pronounce English. When I was a middle school student, I did not speak English very well. I always confused the Chinese pronunciation with the English pronunciation, and I was frustrated with that. So I used this book to practice a lot. 首先，在作答的时候，第一个指出 what is a book. The book is an introduction manual on how to pronounce English. 这就是我们在作答中第一个要回答的问题。这本书是什么？一定要明确的指出来。那么第二点，我们是否就要回答 why it is important？ 所以作答的时候，我们举了一个非常细的例子，就是发生在自己身上的。比如说，咱们在 middle school 的时候，感觉到这个发音非常困难。So I use this book to practice a lot， 把这个背景知识解释出来了。后面呢，我们继续把这个事例具体化。And there was also a video with a book, so I watched the video and then practiced the pronunciation. Now I have improved my English and also gained some confidence because of the book. 我们举完一定的事例，描述清楚之后呢，不能答案就这样算了。我们可以看到，最后我们一定要有一个结语，因为这个问题是什么呢 ？Why the book it is important? 所以我们一定要说清楚、点明白，给老师听到。Why it is a book important? I give you the reasons. Because first, it improved my English. The second, it helped me to gain some confidence. 所以它的作用体现出来了，这也就说明了 why the book it is important. 所以我们一定要把这个重点落下来，并且告诉、明确的告诉老师，我们的重点在这里。Why it is important? From these two points, we look at the second question. The second question chose a unique way of choosing a language. It chose a Chinese book. 
。那么我建议，如果大家没有阅读太多的外文书籍的话，还是选择比如说英语学习类啊。或者是你看到的中文书说可能会比较好一点，因为你会比较擅长。当然，如如果有一些同学特别擅长这一方面的话，也是非常出彩的。其实，那么我们来看一下这个答案到底好在哪里呢 ？Recently, I read a book named "Keep the Espedistra Flying," written by George Orwell. The book influenced me a lot because the story has something that touches my heart. The story talks about a man who wants to be a poet and who abandons many well-paying jobs to pursue his dream of being a poet. 首先，它也是一样的。先把 "What is a book?" 回答了 ，the book 就点出来了，并且还说出了作者。那么 ，why it is important? Because the story has something that touches my heart. 因为这个故事对我。感人至深，对这个故事对我影响非常大，所以作者在在这一块先把这个原因给他说出来，后面就可以来进行细致的描述了。那么他后面就描述了这个故事如何与他贴近，如何打动他的。那么下一部分呢，他继续在叙述。I have a similar experience of quitting a very good job in order to be a writer。也就是说。The book is important because it touches my heart. I have something to relate to the book. 也就是说，我跟这本书的故事感同身受，所以这是它对我而言非常重要的原因。它一整块的逻辑都在跟随那第一点来进行。Also， 这个词提示下一部分内容即将出现了，所以咱们也可以学习用一些这样的连接词。来告诉老师，那么我的第一点答完了，这是我的第二点，是一个非常好的习惯。The man in the story is lack of money because he works as a bookstore assistant and thus has a very low salary. He lives in a shabby apartment and sometimes have no money to buy food. Again, I've got similar experience. 那么在这一点上，我又跟他感同身受了。I once lived in a cramped apartment alone and had no money. The book is important to me because it touches me and gives me courage to persist. 看到呀，这个作者不光在描述这个书中的一个具体内容。那么既然他叙述的是我跟书中的内容感同身受，他也同时举了自己的例子，让这个答案变得非常的丰富充实。但其实这个答案有一个缺点，那就是它有可能太长，因为咱们在句与句之间呢、啊，总会稍微进行停顿，然后进行思考，我后面该说什么。其实这个答案的句子有点过多，内容虽然非常充实，但考虑到它有可能超时，我并不建议大家一下子说这么多或者准备这么多。但是这个答案是非常值得咱们学习的。同时，我们看到最后呢，他把这个。原因 why 点的非常清楚 ，because it touches me and gives me courage to persist， 也是跟第一个答案一样，把这个重点落在了最后，也提示老师我有提到两点主要的 arguments， 而且我还开头进行了开篇，结尾进行了总结，这就是一个非常完整的答案了。然后我们来看一下第二题有什么样的特点 ，some people。Believe that television has had a positive influence on society. Others believe it has had a negative influence on society. Which do you agree with, and why? Use details and examples to explain your opinion. 所以第二题就会问到我们对某一个事物或者某一个现象的一个看法。这一个现象的看法呀，肯定有两种。那么第一种呢，就是认为电视对这个社会呀有一个比较积极的作用。那么第二点，当然就是一个消极的作用。那么你会支持哪一点？这是我们要回答的第一个问题。第二个问题就是我们为什么会支持这样一个观点？我们的 arguments 是什么？所以在这个题里面，我们同样要回答这两个问题。同时，在拿到这个题的时候，我们就要思考，你比较擅长哪一方面？电视，首先想到电视这个事物
，我们想到的是它有传播信息的这样一个功能。如果你能想到这一点，你是否就已经察觉到你的思维已经较为偏向于第一种 positive influence？ 所以，如果你能想到这一点的话，我建议你还是坚持这样一个方面。然后再想第二点，它可能会对我们有什么样的个帮助？我我们会想到，哎，在看电视的时候，我们可以进行交流，我们可以进行学习。那么这样有了这几点论点之后，我们就可以结合自身的经历来让这个答案变得充实。同时注意，咱们有了开篇，也要有结尾，这样首尾呼应，再结合事例和 arguments， 我们的答案就变得非常清晰了。我们来看一下。I think television has a positive influence on society. It's a good source of news. 这就是咱们的第一个论点，为我们提供了很多的信息。The members in the society can get news easily from news channels and thus keep themselves informed of what's happening around. 这就是进一步阐述了 it is a good source of news. 然后下面我们就可以举一个。小的事例，比如说 ，Like my grandfather watches news on TV every day just to keep up with the latest events. 这样就让答案更加具体，以小见大了。Beside, the television can be a kind of entertainment. 也就是说，它不光可以提供信息，也可以提供娱乐，让我们休闲娱乐。这就是咱们的整个架构中的两个主要的论点。那么我提出这样的一个论点之后，同样也要进行例子的解释。我们来看一下 ，People can watch different shows on TV, such as 什么什么一些电视节目，我们可以举上，或者是一些电视剧，这样就让这整个答案、整个 arguments 非常具体了。那么下一部分我们可以说。They all consider TV as a good way of relaxing themselves. 也就是说，我的朋友会认为看电视是一个非常好的休闲娱乐方式。So with the news and same TV programs, people in the society share a lot of things that they can talk about in any event. 也就是说，我们不光看了，我们还可以 talk about it. 我们还可以 share our feelings. 这样，在这一刻的时候，我们就拉近了彼此的距离。这就是我们最后可以落脚的。So therefore, society actually benefits from TV. 所以我们可以看到如何发展咱们的论点。首先，第一点，咱们有论点之后，可以进行一两句的阐释。其次呢，我们要结合一个较小或者是身边发生的这样一个事例来解释。最后呢，我们一定要落脚在咱们的观点上 ，benefits。也就是说 ，it has a positive influence on the society. 所以这样首尾呼应，结合一个比较好的一个结构，咱们的答案就出来了。咱们来看一下下一题。那么第三题和第四题呢？咱们在做题的时候有一段阅读的材料，同时咱们还会听一部分的听力。咱们先来看一下这个阅读材料是什么。我会引导大家如何抓住。重点词如何通过哪些方面来进行思考？首先看一下第三题的材料。The administration has plans to acquire a new sculpture for campus. 看到材料的时候，我们先要注意 who the administration， 这就是发起这个事情的人。And what 他要做什么 ？It wants to acquire a new sculpture. For campus, 这就是他要做的。那么这一件事，后面的一些对话当中就会提到对这样一个事情的一个观点和看法。我们先要抓到 who and what， 还要注意到他有一些什么样的原因让他采取这样一个举动。所以我们抓住的三个关键词 who, what, and why. But we should all oppose this plan. 我们看到了这整个新的这样一个基调是反对这样一个举动的。The university's poor financial con- condition led it to increase the price for campus housing and so on. 所以看到他反对的第一个主要的关键词在 financial condition is poor。当提到论点是反对的时候，我们就要抓它的原因在哪里。
那么它的原因就是 financial condition is poor。我们再来看一下它的第二点反对的原因是什么。那么第二点呢，就是 moreover， 这又是一个提示词，对不对？进行了第二点论证。Just look at the sculpture， 非常大 ，so large。It'll take up all the green space in front of the campus center. This is public space that should be reserved for students to use. 也就是说，第二点，我们也发现它反对的原因在于什么呀？这个 sculpture 占地面积太大，会把这个 in front of the campus center 的这样一块大的绿地都给占用。那么我们就看到了 who, what, and why。那么抓住这三种。原因三种方面的话，咱们就可以来组织我们的作答的时候这样一个总结的这一块了。然后我们来听一下听力。Now listen to two students discussing the opinion expressed in the letter. Did you see Paul's letter in the paper about the new sculpture? Yeah, but it was totally unconvincing. His reasons for opposing the plan are just totally off. I'm glad we'll finally have some nice art on campus. I'd like to shake the donor's hand and say thank you. What do you mean, the donor? You didn't know? An anonymous donor is paying the bill for most of the sculpture. Not the university? No. His assumptions about who's paying for it are all wrong. Still, I wonder if he has a point about the space it'll take up. Well, you know why Paul is upset. He and his friends are always out there on the lawn, right where the sculpture will be, kicking around the soccer ball. Now they'll just have to use another part of the campus to play. Oh, so he just doesn't want to have to move. Yeah, for him, it's sculpture versus convenience. Explain why the woman disagrees with the reasons expressed in the letter. 那么听力听完了，大家在 notes 上做了哪些笔记呢？咱们可以先看一下。然后咱们再来审一下题，它的要求是什么 ？Explain why the woman disagrees with the reasons expressed in the letter. 也就是说，这封信里面呀提到了两个观点，这个 woman 是、啊、反对的。那么我们需要陈述出她为什么反对。其实她反对的原因是否其实就是根据那两个 arguments 来进行的呢？所以非常重要，咱们要抓住那个 letter 里面的两个 arguments。这也就是我让大家一定要注意抓那几个关键词的原因。我们来看一下这个答案应该如何组织。The writer of the letter opposes the university's plan to acquire a new sculpture because the university's financial condition is poor and the sculpture is too large that it will take up all the green space in front of the campus center. 这其实这一整部分呀、啊，都是在总结那个 letter 里面的主要内容。咱们可以看到，他首先总结出了一点，就是 the letter, the writer of the letter opposes the action. 也就是说，他先把那个人的反对的观点先提出来，然后再进行反对观点原因的这样一个陈述。Because 一个关键词，咱们可以用上的这个。那么第一点呢，就是财政的这样一个问题。那么第二点就是占地面积的问题。所以他用了一句话，先把那个 letter 总结了一下。这是咱们应该在作答中第一步要做到的。第二步呢，就是 the woman in the conversation thinks the two reasons are totally unconvincing。这其实是在听力原文中可以找到的。所以咱们会要不要担心听力原文的词我敢不敢用呀？会不会显得我特别没独创性啊？其实这是没必要担心的。只要咱们把这个内容复述出来，而且甚至咱们其实是可以用听力中原文的词句的。这也就取决于咱们的这个笔记做的如何了。下一部分呢，我们就来看一下 woman 是怎么样反对这两个观点的。The woman says it's an anonymous donor who pays the bill of the sculpture, not the university. So there is no need to worry about the university's financial condition. 这就是他的第一点。这其实也是在用的咱们笔记中的第一个总结出的 arguments， 对不对？其实这个 letter 中讲述的第一个原因其实就是财政的问题。那么这个 woman 攻击的也是财政的这个问题，所以咱们一开始就要抓住这样一个论点。那么下一部分就是攻击第二个论点了。As for the point， 这个结构我建议大家都学习一下
在作答中可以经常用得到的。About the space, the woman thinks Paul, the writer of the letter, always plays soccer with his friends on the lawn, where the sculpture will be. She thinks Paul just doesn't want to move to another space. For him, it's convenience versus sculpture. 这其实也是听力当中的原句改编出来的，所以咱们也可以看见，咱们要合理的利用咱们的笔记，一定要把一些关键词、表述那个人观点的词落下来，这样咱们在作答的时候就非常有用了。那么接下来呢，我们来看一下 TPO 第一套题的第四题。那么第四题呢，其实是让咱们在理解这样一段阅读材料还有听力材料的基础上，解释一个专有的名词。那么这道题里面，咱们需要解释的专有名词就是这样一个词 ，groupthink。那么我们如何来解释它呢？咱们就先来看一下这段材料对这个名词的一个定义。One process by which groups may make bad or irrational decisions is known as groupthink。所以说这一句话已经给出了咱们可以利用的信息，以及为 groupthink is a process， 它是一个过程。那么它是一个什么样的过程呢？咱们继续往下看。Individual members of a group attempt to conform their opinions to what they believe to be the group consensus, even though the result may be negative. 也就是说 ，groupthink 它的结局有可能会是 negative。这一点有可能在咱们的听力材料中体现出来，所以咱们一定要把握。那么下一段它会解释什么内容呢？ These include the desire to be like fear of losing a job, or even not wanting to be the one employee delaying a decision that seems inevitable. These kinds of implicit pressures to confirm lead group members to ultimately make decisions that each by himself or herself might normally not make. 那么这一块咱们要把握的就是，当大家遵从 group think 的时候。他们考虑的一些 pressure 有哪些？比如说 fear of losing a job， 那么担心自己丢掉工作，或者是 delaying a decision， 怕自己会成为耽误大家做出决策的这样一个人。那么我们就会做出一个什么举动呢 ？What to confirm lead group？ 也就是说，我们会遵从大家的决定。那么这一段材料就会让我们解释 group think。What is group think？ And take the example。In the material to explain the effects, 也就是说，两个任务。首先，第一个，我们要解释清楚 group think 是什么。那么 group think 它的 definition 我们要给它定出来，就利用咱们刚才在材料中阅读到的一些重点。那么后面的 example 是什么，我们就得根据听力来听了做记录了。那么现在我们开始听听力。Now listen to part of a lecture on this topic. In a business management class. So let me tell you about my own experience with this when I was working for a computer company a couple of years ago. So one day, a coworker and I suggested we should give our computers a design makeover, make them look more up to date. Market research was showing that new customers said they would be more interested in buying our computers if they looked cooler. Our technology was advanced, but the outside design looked really old-fashioned. At first, more than half the group supported us. There were a few senior managers there, though, who didn't support the design change. One of the senior managers said, "Our focus has always been on technology. Changing the look is an unnecessary cost." Almost immediately, some of our supporters changed their minds. Even my coworker changed his mind. When I asked him why after the meeting. He told me he didn't want to make a bad impression on the senior managers. He thought that disagreeing with them might jeopardize his chances of getting a promotion by not looking like a team player. What about me? I hate to admit it, but after a few hours of discussion, I started wondering if it was worth everyone's time to argue about this. As more people sided with senior management, I started to feel like I was the only one holding up the vote. Everyone else seemed to think change wasn't necessary, so I voted against my own idea in the end. So we unanimously decided to stay with the current old-looking design. But this decision ended up costing us a lot of money. That same year, our competitor came out with a new design that attracted some of our customers and prevented us from profiting on potential new customers. 
Explain groupthink and its effects using the example of the computer company. 好了，听完听力，大家有没有记录下一些重点词汇呢？特别是要注意那个事情整个的流程。那么咱们在答案中呢，就需要用一些逻辑联系词，把这样一些过程都简洁明了的 summarize 出来。我们来看一下这样的答案，也请大家把自己的答案跟我们的答案对照一下。看看有什么可以值得学习的地方。首先，我们给出 groupthink 的定义。Groupthink is a process in which individual members of a group confirm their ideas to the group consensus, even if the result may not be well. 其实一句话就总结了那段材料的主要内容。那么下一个 ，The professor in the lecture uses his personal experience in a computer company to illustrate this process. 这句话其实起到了一个承上启下的作用。那么，我们给出这个 process 定义以后，那么咱们的 professor 又举出一个例子。我们需要这样一句话来引出 professor 的例子。我们来看一下这整个事件的流程。那么，整个事件的流程，咱们一定要注意逻辑顺序，一定要注意总结每一个事件的主要一些信息。比如说，我们可以用一些这样的词 ：at first, second, finally, at last 这样一些词。那么。这一整段还有后面的一段都是在总结它这个事件的整个一个流程。咱们来简略的看了一下。At first, the majority supported their suggestion, but there were a few senior managers who didn't support. 那么这是第一个部分。那么第二部分 ，Then some supporters changed their mind, and the coworker changed his mind because he didn't want to make a bad impression on senior managers. 这样事件就进一步进行了。那么下一个又是一个 then， 表示这个事情发生的另外一个转机。After a long discussion and with more and more people sided with senior managers, the professor himself thought he was the only one who's delaying the decision. 这也就体现出了咱们在阅读材料中的一个信息。什么时候大家会做出遵从 groupthink 这样一个决定呢？就是、啊。首先，第一点怕丢了工作。那么第二个呢，就是担心自己会成为 the one who's delaying the decision 的那个一个人。所以这个在他的 speech 里面也体现出来了。那么后面 ，then 又是一个事件。He voted against himself, and at last， 咱们一定要体现出这个事件的结果。它的结果是什么样的 ？The company lost profit because 给出原因 is。Competitor came up with good-looking computers and won more customers. 这其实这一个整个的这样一个答案。首先，第一点，我们给出一个定义。这个定义可以根据我们 reading 里面的材料来进行。那么后面咱们就需要用一些这样的逻辑联系词，把整个事件叙述清楚，并且把最终的结果叙述出来。所以这个题的考察难度主要是在于咱们的听力还有阅读抓信息的能力了。那么下一个，我们来看一下第五题。那么第五题呢，主要是听力和口语相结合的题。咱们首先来听听一下听力。Now listen to a conversation between two students. Hey, Mary, how's your volunteer work going? You still involved in that after-school program with the elementary school kids? Yeah, but I've got a problem. I'm supposed to be driving a bunch of them to the zoo tomorrow. Yeah. And I was supposed to rent a van for the trip, but I waited too long to call the rental agency to reserve、uh, one, and now it turns out they don't have any vans available for tomorrow. I don't know what to do. These kids will be really disappointed if their trip gets canceled. Hmm. Well, doesn't one of your friends here on campus have a car? I mean, couldn't you borrow it for the day? Yeah, probably. But I'd need to borrow two cars, or there wouldn't be enough space for all the kids.、Mm-hmm. That's why I was going to rent the van. And then I need to find somebody else to drive too. I can't drive two cars by myself. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, I'm sure you can probably find a volunteer. Or if you wanted to save yourself the trouble of hunting down a second driver, well, what about public transportation? Check the bus schedule. I, I think there's a bus line that goes right past the zoo. Yeah, that's a possibility. But I don't know. It might be a real challenge supervising the kids on the bus. <laughs> Sometimes they're a handful when they get excited. It's an option, though. 
The speakers discuss two possible solutions to the woman's problem. Briefly summarize the problem, then state which solution you recommend and explain why. 那么咱们接下来来审一下题。The speakers discuss two possible solutions to the woman's problem. Briefly summarize the problem, then state which solution should you recommend and explain why. 其实这样一个题呢，会给出一个情景。那么这个情景呢，通常是非常让人纠结的。那么咱就需要把这个问题，这个纠结的这个 dilemma 抓出来。抓出来以后，咱们要总结这样一个 problem。并且，另外一个说话方会给出两种方式，那么这两种方式呢又各有优优劣，所以在总结完了以后，我们要陈述出我们支持哪一种，并且给出我们自己认为合理的理由。咱们听完听力以后，就会发现，其实这个 problem 呀，非常非常的容易解决。咱们需要找一个比较中和的这样一个方法和意见，比如说这个题，咱们。先总结一下这个人的一个问题。The woman was supposed to drive a bunch of elementary students to the zoo tomorrow, but she didn't rent a van in time, and the kids will be disappointed if the trip gets cancelled. 其实这一部分内容就是在总结他的这个 dilemma。那么这个 dilemma 的他的 speech 里面已经非常明确的表示出来了，特别是一些重点词咱们要抓住，比如说 zoo tomorrow， 那么去哪里，时间。还有这个 disappointed， 那么我们不做，这些人会有什么样的后果？那么总结完了以后，一句话，然后进行以后，咱们就会开始总结他的两个 suggestion。那么第一个 suggestion 就是 borrow a car from one of her friends， but 就表示了这个选择的一个劣势。She has to borrow two cars to hold all the kids， and it's hard to find another driver。这是第一个建议的。一个劣势，那么它相应的有第二个建议。Then the man suggests her to take the public transportation. 那么第二个建议就是公共交通。那么 he is pretty sure that there is a bus line past the zoo, but the woman thinks it's hard to control the kids on the bus. 咱们一定要把握住每一条建议它的劣势，那么针对它的劣势来进行一个比较好的迂回的战战略，怎么样？把这个劣势用咱们的这个语言总结出来，然后提出一个比较中和的这样一个办法。那么下一步呢，咱们就要陈述自己的观点了。我要 personally， 这表示我们的个人陈述开始了。I would recommend。那么我的建议是什么呢 ？The woman to take the bus line。那么我们选择了第二个。Even if the kids are handful, they are still controllable。也就是说，虽然啊，这个。女士担心这些孩子不好管理，但其实我们给出，虽然他们啊非常麻烦，但是他们也是可以控制的，只要我们加以管教的话。Besides， 这是我们的第二个理由。There is no guarantee that she can borrow two cars and find another driver at the same time。也就是说，我们陈述出了我们选择的理由，并且给出了另外一个选择的一个不合适的一个地方。所以咱们在思考的时候，不光要考虑我们选这个选择的一个理由，而且还要考虑我们为什么不选那一个选择。多问自己几个为什么，这样咱们在作答的时候思路就会清晰一点。那么下一个呢，我们进入到 TPO 的第六题。那么 TPO 的第六题，我们先听一下录音。Now listen to part of a lecture in a psychology class. The professor is discussing the mathematical capabilities of babies. Scientists have learned some interesting things about the intellectual abilities of babies. They say there's evidence that babies as young as five months old can do basic arithmetic, that they can add. Scientists think babies know that one plus one equals two, and not one. The evidence is indirect because obviously you can't ask a five-month-old baby to add up some numbers for you. So they devised an experiment where,、um, in this experiment, a baby is shown a doll on a table. Okay, so the baby looks at the doll. Then the researcher lowers a screen in front of the doll. So now the doll's hidden behind the screen, but the baby's already seen the doll and so knows it's there. Well, 
Then the researcher takes a second doll and very obviously places it behind the screen with the first one. Okay, so now you have two dolls behind the screen, right? Well, no, because what the researchers did was they secretly took away one of the dolls. And then when they raised the screen back up, the baby, well, it expects to see two dolls, right? But there's only one there. And guess what? The baby's surprised. It expects two, but it only sees one. How could the researchers tell that the baby's surprised? Well, they recorded the baby's eye movements on camera. And we know that when a baby is surprised by something, a loud noise or an unexpected flash of light maybe, it stares at where the noise or light is coming from. And that's what the babies in the experiment did. They stared. Because a baby knows that if you add one doll and one doll, you should have two dolls. So when it sees one doll, then it stares because it's surprised. Using the research described by the professor, explain what scientists have learned about the mathematical abilities of babies. 那么听完了录音呢，我们发现这其实是一个 professor 的 speech。那么这个 speech 里面讲述了。The mathematical abilities of babies. 那么这个题就要求咱们把这个 speech 里面的 research 描述出来，并且、啊、还要描述出这些科学家们的发现。所以说，咱们一定要在听听力的时候注意落下一些关键词，还有那个实验是怎么样进行的，再加上一些逻辑的词汇，咱们就会让咱们这个答案啊显得非常清晰了。其实这个题呢，不需要咱们。进行个人的意见的陈述，只需要进行聆听、记录和总结就可以了。但是这样一个过程呢，也是需要咱们反复的练习，才能达到简洁而又明确的目的。我们来看一下咱们这个答案，咱们大家来对比一下自己的答案与这样一个答案到底差距在哪里。大家也可以挑一下这个答案到底有什么问题。In the lecture. The professor describes how scientists learn about babies' mathematical abilities. 先给出这样一个大致的一个概括。那么这个 lecture 是关于什么的？咱们在回答的时候，首先要做到这一点。Researchers did an experiment to test babies' ability to add that baby knows one plus one equals two. 这是他们实验的一个内容，咱们也要点出来。那么下面呢，咱们就得用一些比较清晰的逻辑词。把这这个实实验的整个过程叙述出来，我们可以看到 first， 然后下一步呢 ，then，but 这里点出了他们做的另外一个事情，就是把一个娃娃藏起来，看看那个 baby 有什么反应。那么这一点在咱们的听力录音当中也特意的说出来了，所以咱们也一定要注意注意总结。那么下一部分呢，就是得出一个结论。So the baby has the ability to add. It knows one doll plus one doll equals two dolls. 也就是说，咱们把这整个实验的过程说完了以后呀，还要给出这样一个结论。那么这个结论也是跟咱们一开始回答题目的时候这样一个呃开首句是相呼应的。所以这样显得我们的答案非常完整了。所以咱们这个答案呢是分几步走的。第一步是先总结一下那个 professor 的 speech， 主要是关于什么的。那么 researchers 在做什么？第二步呢，就是把这整个实验的过程自己 summarize， 并且呈现出来。那么第三步，咱们一定要给出一个结论，这个 experiment 最终的结果和收获是什么？这样整个答案就非常完整了。好了，这就是今天这节课的主要内容。那么非常感谢大家一起跟我在这里学习托福口语，我们下次再见。